This is the third Tuesday of the month Wapaka City Council meeting. Okay, welcome everybody to our regular scheduled city council meeting. It seems like a month since we've met last. Um, so we'll begin this with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> and we'll ask Sandy to read the clerk's open meeting statement for us. This meeting and all other meetings of the Common Council are open to the public. Proper notice has been posted and given to the press in accordance with Wisconsin state statutes, so the citizens may be aware of the time, place, and agenda of this meeting. And also take roll for us. Brian Smith. Here. Steve Hackett. Here. Lori Chestnut. Here. Paul Hagan. Here. Alan Keeland. Here. Scott Prochatsky. Here. Dave Peterson. Here. Paul Mayo. Dimitri Martin. Here. Mary Fair. Here. And Eric Olson. Eight present, we have a quorum. Uh, next up is the consent agenda. Sandy, you have a couple of additions to that consent agenda. Uh, yes, under number five, consent agenda letter A, monthly reports number one, finance director treasurer's report was uploaded to the city website. Under number five, consent agenda letter C, the CVB budget was also uploaded to the city website. And under number five, consent agenda letter D, the list of bills was uploaded to the city website. That's all. All right. Thanks, Sandy. And you understand uh, how consent agenda works. These are... Uh, all these items that are under the consent agenda, we make one motion and we vote on that that one motion unless uh, council members would like to see any of those items <coughs> moved from the consent agenda to the regular agenda. And you can choose to do that and then we would take those individually instead of as a whole. Anybody would like to do that? Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. Motion by Keelan, second by Hackett, that we approve the consent agenda with those additions that Sandy had spelled out for us. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Under the regular agenda, um, I guess we did have just one handout, and that came from uh, Gusmer Enterprises, and we'll be discussing that later. Um, in the, on the agenda, and you should have that on your desk. Uh, otherwise, uh, the re regular agenda is as is, so I would need a motion to approve. Move to approve the regular agenda. Motion second. by Chestnut, second by, I'm second. sorry, Peterson. To approve the regular agenda. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Okay, under non-agenda items and uh, announcements, we have uh, introduction of resolution number 1434 for Shamble Road va vacation. Uh, and then this is, the main reason it's on here is just to make sure that we uh, set a public hearing uh, for September 3rd of 2019. And Justin, uh, are you ready to um, just explain what's going on here and then I know that Chris is here Mr. Gusmer is here and uh, I forgot your name again Tom is here too and I think they want to say a few things too so sure absolutely uh, so the resolution is shown on page 85 of your packet uh, continues on to 86 there's an exhibit a for the legal description of the section of Shamble Road that we will be vacating uh, exhibit B is a uh, sketch or drawing of that legal description. Um, in the handout that was passed around, I believe you all have the aerial view of the Gusmer expansion. Is that 
Is that what the one you turned hand out, out there, Tom? Um, showing basically the, the project, the reason why we're doing this, uh, Gustav Enterprises is planning to expand their operation, their facility uh, to the east. In order to do that, uh, they, I guess we're partnering, working with them uh, to vacate a portion of Shamble Road. Uh, Gustav Enterprises owns the, the land to the east of Shamble, the old Ort property. Uh, so basically it would become one larger or one large uh, parcel together, uh, and we would reroute Shamble Road around uh, basically the Gusmer property. So uh, a land swap, it's almost a one-for-one -one land swap. So the road would go around it uh, to the east and back to the south uh, to Ware Street, uh, rerouting our uh, water main and uh, the gravel road. So, uh, and that is all just to uh, accommodate this uh, new expansion uh, for the industry. So we need to get this uh, <clears throat> resolution passed uh, tonight on council, as the mayor has mentioned, so that we can get a public hearing uh, scheduled for September 3rd, uh, which would then meet basically the uh, construction schedule for the build of the building and also of uh, realigning our road and water main. So I think I, think I covered it. Okay. Uh, Chris or Tom? Anything you would like to add to what Justin? Are there any questions on the building or the wise? Does anybody want to hear about their project? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Hello, Chris Customer. Uh, yeah, we've uh, been fortunate to continue the growth that we've been undergoing as a business. We're looking to expand about 35,000 square feet. Uh, the net result, continued job creation, we'd add somewhere between 20 and 30 additional jobs to the community uh, within the building. It's a warehouse space, it's um, uh, employee facilities, break room, things like that to support our existing future growth, and then additional production space so we can fit in some new work cells. So that's a quick summary of the project. We appreciate your assistance in uh, helping with this growth. And this is your third project in the last, what, seven or eight years now? Or uh, it would be the third major project <laughs> since 2006, yeah. Okay, so 13 years, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Anybody have any questions? Who was uh, paying for the rerouting of the road and the, the water main? Was that money part of the project? That's part of the project uh, that the city has signed a pre-development agreement with Gus Enterprises, and they will be covering that cost uh, through an assessment process. Uh, maybe Kathy can s provide a few more details, but the short story is they will be. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions of Justin or Chris? All right, I, I need to just make sure, I might have said this incorrectly, but we are not approving resolution 1434. We are just making a motion to set a public hearing for this resolution for September 3rd, uh, 2019 at 6 p.m. So I'd be looking for a motion. I would move that the council set a public hearing uh, for September 3rd uh, regarding the uh, resolution 1434. And I'll second. Motion by Martin, second by Chestnut that we uh, set a public hearing for September 3rd, 2019 at 6 p.m. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Abstain. Uh, motion carries. Uh, seven ayes, one abstention, two absent. <clears throat> okay, uh, next we have, uh, this is still under announcements, we have a thank you letter from the Wapaka Community Arts Board. Uh, that's just informational. It's actually on page 89 of your packet. So... Mary, have they finished all of their sidewalks now or their crosswalks? We have two remaining. One will be done, and they'll both be done during the week of um, Arts on the Square. Um, they are the the crosswalk from Book World, which isn't there anymore, to um, Artist Eyes and Trout's building. So crossing Session Street at, at Main, and the other one crosses Main Street at Sessions. So again, from like where embellishments was or Northern Home is now to Fletcher's. Um, so, yeah, two more to go and they're wonderful. And thank you again 
to the street department and Justin and Roger and all of you. Yeah. you know, we've been getting, as we talked today at the department mayor ha mayor's meeting today, we've gotten outside discussion from other communities. Uh, I mean, I personally talked to the mayor of uh, Green Bay yesterday about it and, you know, as someone said today, a lot of communities have talked about it, but nobody has actually done it. And we're probably one of the first that has actually done it around here. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. All right, uh, next up we have public input. Um, this is for non-agenda items. If anybody would like to step up to the podium, give your name and address and speak to us on a non-agenda item, it's, it's all yours. Uh, please limit your discussion to three minutes or less. All right, let's move on then to uh, department head reports. And uh, we have, uh, we'll start with Kathy as always. Uh, remember, Kathy's wearing a couple hats for the next couple months here. So, Kathy. Thank you, Mayor Smith. Good evening, council members. Um, I'm pretty much going to just report about the finance department. Uh, but uh, we're working currently with the police department in, in um, doing the setup for advanced scheduling. This is uh, a timekeeping software that we purchased uh, when we updated our um, payroll software and our financial software, and it's going to help them with their scheduling. They have a very unique schedule, uh, and they sometimes don't fit in the same boxes we do as um, Monday through Friday employees, so uh, we're um, putting that uh, in place for the police department to make their payroll processing uh, much smoother and easier. Um, we are, have um, been informed by the Department of Transportation that uh, they are going to get amending our uh, 2018 taxi grant by giving us an additional $12,000 to be able to purchase our, one of our um, buses are instead of using two years of our grant funding for equip for replacement. Um, so we will be able to continue with um, buying another minivan also this year. So um, that was very nice surprise um, for the transit service because uh, both of those pieces of equipment uh, have over 200,000 miles on them and need to be replaced. Um, the employee annual um, public ass um, physical assessment, I put public, I automatically must have corrected it, but um, personal health assessment for each of the full-time employees is coming up on August 1st. Um, already uh, the rec center um, clinic is full, uh, and so uh, we should um, see um, good participation again this year. Uh, we also uh, have been informed uh, a little early on our health insurance renewal that uh, we are tracking very well uh, as far as experience and should see some favorable rates if nothing happens in the meantime for that. So um, I'm, I'm doing really well on uh, predicting a, a, a lower uh, health insurance uh, premium than normal. Um, otherwise, I don't do anything else. Uh, keeping up for day to day and lots of meetings and fires putting out. So that's all I have. Anybody have any questions, Kathy? Any questions concerning economic development from any of the council members at this time that you can think of? Uh, this would be a good time to ask that too. I got one. Uh, is there any update on the situation with the old Catholic Church and that? Developed? Yes, uh, we. I have um, asked Andrew Dane to contact uh, Nino Perdelli, who is the current owner of the property. Uh, he is still scheduled um, to bring us a proposal by fall. So. Um, I've tasked uh, Andrew with certain economic development things uh, and ha and felt that it was much better spent of my consultant money uh, to, uh, instead of him coming to these meetings, is to 
have him more hours in the office to bird dog those type of economic development. So he's been handling a lot of the um, economic development and zoning issues besides coming to the design, uh, development review team. So. Thank you. All right, Kathy, thank you. Let's go to the library. Well, Wait. our summer library program is in full swing. We have almost a thousand people signed up for the summer library program. Um, 340 adults, 500, 454 kids, and those are listeners and readers and 174 <coughs> teens. And if you happen to be in the area last Thursday, we had a Star Wars day and the stormtroopers were here. And there were lots of pictures that were taken. If you look at our Facebook page, you'll see some of those. Um, so really what we're focusing on is being the out of school place for learning for adults as well as children and teens. Um, we're seeing a lot of activity this year. Our programs are being well attended. Um, we're really pleased with the turnout for from the community. About a third of the people who are using our summer library program are using it online. So there's an online component that makes it easier for those people who are really attached to their phones or their devices. Um, we are uh, coming to the close of our strategic plan data um, gathering point and we're gonna be pulling together that information and coming up with a plan by November that we'll be able to um, present that to the council. Um, and we'll have a day long meeting in August with our committee to uh, formulate that plan. We have a new program at the library called Lucky Day and with donated funds, we're able to buy some extra copies of popular books or videos and they check out for a much shorter period of time but they can't be put on hold and you only get it if you happen to be a the lucky person that sees it when you come into the library. So come in and look at our lucky day wall. There should be a few things on there by tomorrow. They're, um, the videos are due in three days. So there's a little bit more of a turnaround and we're doing that with help from the friends of the library. Um, our outreach and engagement is uh, really blossoming this summer. We're doing a lot of outreach to Sunny Day Daycare Center. And these are kids who wouldn't get to the library during the day because their parents are working. So we have baby garden story time and then STEM programming for school aged children at the <coughs> Learning Center after um, they have a program there for their kids after summer school. Um, so there's a lot going on at the library. I hope that you'll come in and see us. The Lunar Lab is still uh, in process and we'll have a NASA exhibit in August celebrating that 50th anniversary of the moon landing and there'll be some programming along with that. So please come in and see us, um, take a look at what we're doing and recognize that we're really important to the community as an educational facility. Thank you. Peg, can you tell the council about how lucky we are to have that lunar exhibit? Uh, well, our exhibit room coordinator is really a go-getter, and Liz Kinnear actually was able to get something from NASA, so that's going to be coming um, with photographs and some artifacts from the moon landing. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun, so hopefully you'll get in and, and have that reminiscing. I know I can remember in 1969 watching that black and white television as they landed on the moon, and... We're actually having a lunar um, landing retro party with, uh, so that we're gonna be watching that as if we were watching it in 1969 with some really outdated uh, hors d'oeuvres and some mocktails and that kind of stuff too. So check our website and you can find all of those things. Thank you. Peg, any other questions for Peg? All right, let's uh, head over to Public Works. Justin. All right, thanks Mayor. My report can be seen on page 27 and 28 within the packet. Uh, within the wastewater department, Sam Zabel has passed his probational period. He's been with us for six months. Uh, he's making strides in the right direction and our crew is finally uh, at full strength again. Um, we've been advertising uh, for rehabbing one of our tanks uh, within 8,000 billion, which is part of our uh, digestion uh, process of our, of our treatment plant. Uh, I'll be bringing forward hopefully a recommendation for the, the next uh, council meeting. Uh, June, we completed a mercury program. The, the wastewater treatment plant sponsored a program 
where we accepted old mercury products, light bulbs, thermometers, uh, things of that nature, uh, basically just to get it off the street and prevent it from getting into the environment. Uh, it's, it was a requirement through the DNR, but it's something that uh, we're proud of doing and we're going to continue to do uh, each year. <clears throat> street side, Evans Street is uh, nearly complete. Uh, we wanted to have it open by now. Uh, the June weather was definitely a challenge. We had some washouts. The grass has not established uh, like we wanted, so we kept it closed to, to monitor how the grass is growing. Uh, we're going to have a crew on site this week to clean up some of those washouts that were still out there. Uh, and we're hoping to have it open here pretty soon, but again, we want to make sure that the grass is growing before we open it up. Uh, these are people's front lawns. Uh, they care for it. They, uh, they are really, well, if we don't have it just right when we open it, we're going to hear about it. So we want to make sure it's right before we do that. <coughs> uh, we ordered the snowblower, so knock on wood, it gets here before the first snow in October or November. Uh, we did some asphalt patching around the area. You probably saw some, some new uh, patches out there. Um, we installed new banners on Main Street. Uh, there's some red banners out on Main Street. Uh, we ordered them, got them out there. We got a few more coming. We're going to put along uh, City Hall Square. Um, I received proposals from uh, design firms, for engineering design firms of, of Granite Street. Uh, those are under review. I'm hoping to have that review complete and then bring a recommendation to council for the first uh, meeting in August. Uh, so again, that's just the design part of Granite Street from Harrison all the way down to Main Street, that parking lot, and possibly the alleyways um, on the west side of Main Street. <clears throat> we have a, an opening in our street department. We have advertised for that. Applications have come in. Uh, those are under review. Uh, we're planning to hopefully have that process complete uh, within about a month and try to bring somebody on board on our street department. <clears throat> on the well or water side, well seven and eight, uh, the rehabilitation project, uh, seven and eight are done. Uh, the crew that did the work said that seven and eight were about the cleanest wells they've ever seen. Uh, so that always makes us feel good when, when we hear that sort of stuff. Well five will be starting soon. Uh, so that'll be shut down and then we'll be off the hook for another uh, nine to 10 years before we start the cycle of rehabbing our wells again. <clears throat> Uh, if you haven't noticed, the bandstand out front has been repainted from top to bottom. Uh, Russ, in the help of a local painter, uh, we got the whole thing done. Uh, Bauer Electric redid the lights, so we have new lights on it as well. Uh, so take a look at it, see how uh, shiny and nice it is. Um, <clears throat> We have a couple anniversaries this last month. Eric Hinson, our water department, celebrated his 24th year uh, in early July. And then Roger Hansen, of course, the street supervisor, celebrated his 32nd year uh, on July 6th. That's it. All right. Any questions or comments for Justin? All right. Thanks, Justin. Andrew, uh, Parks and Rec. Thank you, Mayor, Council members. Uh, we'll start down in the senior center. Um, they recently had their 50th anniversary party uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, it was uh, well attended. We had about 250 to 275 people there. Um, we had some new members sign up. We had uh, a lot of members having a lot of fun that day. There was dancing, there was food, there was all sorts of good stuff. So uh, if you're able to attend, that's uh, great, but uh, I really want to... Um, give a shout out to Sarah and her staff. Um, they put in a ton of time on that. A um, lot of extra hours to make that uh, go really well. And uh, she should be recognized for that because it did go very well um, for that. So um, they have another fundraiser coming up August 14th. We do have our music in the parks um, that the arts uh, board puts on and they will be selling concessions there. So if you uh, enjoy going down there and listening to those bands, um, stop in, grab a little uh, snack and help out the senior center as well. They also received a new grant. Uh, it's through the Wisconsin um, Boy, I know I'm going to say it wrong. Institute of Healthy Aging, I think is what it's called. 
Um, they got a PALS grant, and that means physical activity for uh, lifelong success. Um, so what that does is it's a, a program to try to get people from the community who haven't exercised or just haven't exercised in a long time um, together and supporting each other and, and getting active again. Um, so Sue and Sarah will be taking some training uh, coming up here in August based on that grant um, to move forward with that. Uh, we'll be working with uh, CESA 5 again. That's uh, the organization that runs the uh, alternative school um, at the old location of the school next door to us. Um, so down a little bit further than the health club. Um, they used our gym space this past year. Uh, we created a memorandum of understanding with them to do that, and we're going to do that again this uh, upcoming year. So it does bring in a little bit of revenue and um, gets our gym usage uh, higher as well. Uh, we will be trying to start the food truck rally this week that uh, we talked about uh, uh, last meeting. Um, so if you're interested in checking that out, that'll start uh, Thursday. Um, park side of it, um, we are going to put in an ADA swing at Eco Park. Uh, we had a couple families out there that requested that, and uh, we're going to work with them um, and make sure that we have a swing that is adaptable to them. And uh, that swing actually should come in tomorrow. I got a phone call today. It should come in tomorrow, so we should have it up there soon and uh, uh, help those families that are out there uh, by the Eco Park. We also uh, created some bocce ball courts. If you noticed, um, some painting in the center circle in the grass at Upper South Park. Um, those are bocce ball courts. I don't know much about it either, so don't ask me about bocce ball. Uh, but we got a request from, uh, there's a bocce ball team for the Special Olympics, and they were practicing in our parks, and they requested that we could um, paint those courts for them, and we did, and they've been using them on Wednesday nights, and it's gone very well, and they're very thankful for that. So we've been doing that um, with them. Uh, baseball, softball has wrapped up. Uh, our second session of swimming, which is always a little bit higher, attended due to warmer weather and warmer water. Uh, soccer and our new three sport uh, all started this past week, and all of those are going well um, for us. That is it. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Questions? Dave. My question is the, excuse me. Go ahead, Dave. The food truck is, did you change the times on that, Andy? I did have to, otherwise I wouldn't have gotten any uh, food trucks. And I know it was something that was brought up at the last meeting. Um, so, you know, one food truck could make it during the day. The other ones, uh, most of them have uh, other full-time jobs as well. Um, so they just weren't able to make it. So um, we struggle a little bit to find some food trucks, and that was the one way of hopefully making it a little bit more successful. So had to make that change. And the times uh, are? Four to eight. Thank you, Dave. <laughs> four to eight. Not a, I'm not opposed to it, Andy, but do we have to change what we passed? Because we passed an earlier time. I don't know if we do or not, but. Uh, Tom, what do you think? I think that, I don't think so. Okay. okay. Time. All right. I want to make sure. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Any other comments, questions? All right. Chief Ozell. Thank you, Mayor Council. Uh, my report can be found on page nine. The Wapaka, the police department is in the process of filling a patrol sergeant's position. Right now, we have um, four applicants that have submitted a <laughs> resume and a letter of interest. They will have to take a written test, and when we're, they're done with the written test, there'll be an oral interview with an outside panel, as well as a oral interview with me, and then their last year of their job performance. Those are going to be the things that they will be graded on, and um, we're hoping to have that done the first week in August. So when we have our commission meeting, the second Tuesday, that we can go ahead and we can select that person and our goal is to have that person start um, Labor Day weekend and they will be on call Labor Day weekend so we're going to break them in right. <laughs> so but that will bring us up um, both officers Brian McCuskey and Randy Bush should be done with their field training and that should bring us back up to full staff. So that'll be good when we can get to that point. Um, the other thing that we are looking at right now is the replacement of a 2014 and 2015 squads. Um, we've had, obviously we've had those for a while 
and uh, we're looking at getting two new SUVs next year, and we get the state bid from Ewald um, down towards the Milwaukee, Oconomowoc area, and those are looking right now. There is a just regular gas one that was roughly 32000 and they had a turbo and a hybrid, and those were well into the mid-30s. So we're looking at this time of just getting replacing the two new cars, and I'm going to bring some final numbers to the commission next week as to what the cost is that it's going to cost us um, to get those cars so we can get them ordered. We've always ordered them early so we can get them um, out on the roads earlier in the, in the winter time. Um, so that's our goal with that. Um, for some of you, uh, obviously Evans Street has been closed, but we did put our speed board sign up on Evans Street and it's still there, but I have data from June 26th through July 2nd. During that time frame, just going one direction from Churchill Street towards Berlin Street or Coney Highway E, we had 394 vehicles travel that route. Um, of those 394, we had some really good results. We only had one vehicle that went over 35 miles per hour. It was one vehicle between 36 and 40 miles per hour, and most of the other vehicles ranged from 21 to 30 miles per hour. So we're gonna continue to have that speed board. I've been working with um, Justin in regards to that. Once the barricades are lifted, you'll see a directed um, enforcement from us that will be running radar there, as well as the speed board. Um, that road is really nice, and uh, we wanna try to keep the speeds down in that area. And then lastly, um, we're gonna be having our brat fry at Fleet Farm on August 10th from 10 to two o'clock. And last year we also had a brat fry there and a lot of people ask us what we do with those proceeds. During this year, we actually purchased um, with the fundraising money, two less lethal shotguns as well as their ammunition. And that's just another tool that we have for us when dealing with people. Unfortunately, there's times in the winter time that our tasers don't work. We can't use our pepper spray. Our tasers don't work because everybody has heavy, heavy clothing on. The pepper spray may not work because of the wind direction. So this is just another tool that we can use um, to assist us in the field. And then also with that money, we always go ahead to the bread basket and we serve two different meals during the year. So that's what that money from the broad, from the broad fry is, is helping with. So other than that, everything's informational. All right. Thank you, Chief. Any questions, comments? Um, yeah, on those existing police vehicles that you wanted to replace, do you yes. know about how many miles are on each of those? They're over 100,000 miles. Those are miles, and you probably got 100,000 hours on them. Um, our maintenance that we have is really, really high on vehicles. We've had vehicles sometimes five and six years and we've had to replace transmissions. Um, we, we just have a lot of problems with them. And then with the resale value of them, we're getting a, we'll be getting a higher resale value of those vehicles. Do they come free marked, free uh, logoed and everything? No, that's something that we have to, that we have to send out for. Um, so they'll, they'll come, we just order them, there'll be a, a black squad car, and then those get sent out for the decals and all the in interior stuff, the computers, the radar, um, they put the radar stuff into the dash, the lights and everything else. Um, and just lastly, has there been any consideration to um, designing the look of the police cars so that they're more attention getting, more um, safety focused as opposed to the aggressive sort of black styling? I'm we just we just did a redesign with them with they used to be black and white now they're all black with our with our logos that are on there okay any other questions comments all right let's go to josh's world here it 
Um, this past two weeks, we've completed having our new phone system installed. We're operational on there, no major issues, just small little tweaks and small little things that come with a project like that. Um, one of the nice things in this room, we were able to tie in the new phone to the speakers and the mic, so if we ever have to do a call in here, it's integrated to the system we're using. Um, we are making our switch with Spectrum from the PRI to SIP phone service the second week in August. That's going to save us money, and that's just newer technology to get our phone lines in here. Um, I've been working with AT&T on more and more billing issues that we continue to have with them, and they're worse than dealing with government. It took seven weeks just to talk to the right person there. Um, with the phone project, we were able to free up a server that I'm going to put at the PD basically to put redundancy on our servers, so all of our virtual servers will also be over there if we ever need to fail over to that. Um, this Friday, proposals are due for multi-function printers. We've got five machines, two that we own that are over seven years old, and then the other three are lease or rental agreements end between November this year and February next year. So um, working through that process, and hopefully we'll have a recommendation for City Council in September on that. Um, with PAC Online, we continue to work on our grant project. This year, we've been hitting a lot of dead ends, talking to property owners to locate equipment or possibly erect towers. This past week or two, we've been starting to hit some good luck. We have put up one and very likely shortly a second uh, pop in the town of Deer Creek, which is just in Outagamie County where the village of Bear Creek is, so it's right near our project area. Um, we've met with the town chair up at Matson about some possible opportunities up there as well. And for anything with our grant project, we've got until September 30th um, for reimbursement. And it's not that we can't continue expanding or doing upgrades after that date. That would just be at our full expense. So that project's moving along. All right. Any questions for Josh? Comments? All right. And uh, Sandy, city clerk. Thanks, Mayor. Um, Mine will be short and sweet, unlike um, a couple others, but... Oh, it's yeah, <laughs> right away. <laughs> um, I first want to thank Mayor Smith for appointing me to the position of city clerk. And um, I hope you had a chance to look in your packet because I did provide a listing of all of the licenses that the city clerk's office issues because there's many that we do that you guys don't see. They, they don't need council approval. And um, that's it. <laughs> All right. Any Thank you. questions, comments for Sandy? All right. Well, let's move on then right away to unfinished business, which is actually getting council confirmation for uh, my appointment of Sandy to the city clerk's position. Um, and at the same time, you would be approving the job description that Kathy has put together. Just a little history as we remember. Uh, our, our uh, city administrator held the city administrator's position slash city clerk's position. We are now breaking that off and the city clerk will be a separate position as it was uh, many years ago, 15 years ago or so. So we're, we're putting it back in as a city clerk's position. You can see the, uh, if you look on, starting on page 91, you can see the job description for that. Um, Kathy, anything you want to add? Uh, no, it, these are essentially the statutorial um, duties of the clerk uh, that are in the job description and any other things that Sandy is responsible to for the council. Okay, and I guess there's a third thing in here too. Uh, we are, or I am, recommending that Sandy then receive a salary of $57,100. And Sandy, you were hourly before, was it? Correct. Okay. All right. And she's going to from hourly to salary. Uh, it is a it is a raise in pay from what she was making as the assistant uh, clerk. So we're looking at all three of those items, and we can do those all in one motion if you're okay with that. Yes, sir. Mayor, I would like to. Uh, make a motion that we approve of all those with the exception of her salary. I would like to see her salary go to 60000 
And the reasoning that I'm saying that is that she's been doing these jobs for 15 years and hasn't been really compensated for what she's been doing. And I would like to see her get a raise to 60000 Okay, so you heard uh, Steve's motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, uh, we have a motion by Hackett and a second by Fair that the council approves of uh, Sandy Stibbs as our new city clerk and approves her job description and also approves her salary of $60,000 per year. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against? Motion carried. Do we need to do the, this right now? Okay. We might as well. We're on camera here. so. Okay, this is actually the oath, and I'm going to stand next to her so she can read off of what I read first. But I, Sandy Stibbs. I, Sandy Stibbs. Having been appointed to the position of city clerk for the city of Wapaka. Having been appointed to the position of city clerk for the city of Wapaka. Do affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. Do affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin. And will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability under the penalties of perjury. And will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability under the penalties of perjury. All right. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's uh, move on then. Um, we have a resolution number 1433. Uh, Justin, this is you. Yeah, this is the <clears throat> second reading of this resolution for our sidewalk project uh, or our sidewalk assessment um, for our sidewalk replacement program. Um, that's shown on Page 94 and 95 of the packet. Again, this is whenever sidewalk is replaced on a property adjacent or adjacent to a property uh, that is split 50-50 between the city and the adjacent property owner. Uh, the list of property owners in those parcels are shown on page 95 of the packet. Uh, notification was sent. Uh, that process has all, the proper notification process has all been taken place. Uh, so tonight would be the approval of the resolution. And then our crew, um, city street crew, will actually be doing the work. We will not be hiring this work out. Uh, but we will be completing the work at uh, $5 a square foot for 5 inch concrete and $7 a square foot for 7 inch concrete, which is usually in driveways. So uh, an estimate was created, uh, and those, uh, People were made aware of the, the potential cost that will be assessed to their property. Um, the actual work that will be done will be measured and uh, assessment will be based on the actual field measurements. That's about, rad, about it. All right, so um, the resolution is basically uh, allowing us to assess the property owners uh, for the uh, fixing of their sidewalks. So we'd need a motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Keelan, second by Peterson that we approve uh, resolution 1433. Discussion? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, is this, this list is considerably less than years in the past. Is it because our sidewalks are getting better or is it budgetary <coughs> consideration? <coughs> uh, a large portion of the sidewalks we're replacing are on city property uh, within parking lots, uh, alleyways, things of that nature. So we're just taking on um, those replacements and consuming that 100% cost. So based, this is around our sidewalk replacement program. We budget fifteen to $20,000 each year to replace sidewalks for the entire city. And usually it's done in a neighborhood or down a couple of streets in the assessments. You know, all the 100% of that sidewalk is assessed or not 100% sidewalk. 100% of the work is done where it can be assessed. Um, here we just have a lot of it occurring, like I said, along parking lots that we own or alleyways that we own. Okay, so, so. that's why there's less yes. individual. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other discussion? Sandy will call the roll. Mary Fair. Aye. 
Lori Chestnut. Aye. Paul Hagan. Aye. Dave Peterson. Aye. Scott Prochatsky. Aye. Alan Keeland. Aye. Steve Hackett. Aye. And Dimitri Martin. Aye. Eight ayes, motion carried. All right, thanks, Justin. Uh, next up, we have uh, new business. We have uh, entering into a contract uh, with IPR Integrated Public Resources for assistance with city administration. Kathy? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my item is on page 96 in the packet, and with the retirement of the city administrator, I am asking for assistance uh, in the duties of the position. Um, based on information that um, I've gotten from other municipalities, um, I've uh, reached out to Integrated Public Resources, um, who has um, filled in this type of position in uh, Winnicani, Wyoiga, uh, has recruited for the New London City Administrator. Um, I also know. Um, Rustan Gompel, he is my former boss from the village of Brown Deer. Uh, but um, he, 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 his company uh, has other retired um, administrators, um, village managers, uh, who assist communities in this, in this position uh, to help uh, get us over that uh, vacancy and uh, help alleviate some of the stress and um, that filling that position uh, is um, causing staff to like have sleepless nights. <laughs> but um, I have Russ here tonight, uh, so uh, he can go over some of the items that he has uh, planning on uh, assisting with us and some of his experience and would be more than happy to answer some questions. Uh, he also has met with uh, the department heads uh, that were available uh, mm -hmm. when we brought him in um, and answered a lot of their questions. Uh, they also, mm -hmm. uh, IPR does do um, recruitment and um, we may be using him to help us in the recruitment process for this pos position. Uh, I'm looking at having him uh, two days a week for five to six hours. So I think it's a minimal amount of money to uh, help with the administration of the city. So, Russ, do you want to... Thank you and good evening. Um, Kathy pretty much covered our, the background. Um, our company integrated public resources is actually a division of McMahon Engineering out of Nina. And <clears throat> our company was created to do public-private partnerships where we help communities do public pro projects with uh, some private funding. But in addition, we do administrative services. Uh, we come in and, and do interim uh, administrative services. Uh, we will also help out communities in some other interim uh, assignments. Um, we also do executive recruitment. Um, most recently, I was the interim ad administrator in the city of Winnicani. Um, I've helped out, I'm in the village of Winnicani. I've helped out at the village of Hortonville. Um, I did some interim work for the village of Hortonville. And during my time as interim, I also put together a recruitment um, profile and process uh, that the, the village board for the village of Hortonville ended up uh, adopting and going with. In addition, we've done the recruitment for the city of New London, and I've had uh, the opportunity to be the interim administrator in, in Bellevue and Mondovi, which is on the western part of the state. So um, my resume is actually in your packet. So if you have questions about uh, my background, very briefly, 35 years of local government experience. Um, I started out on the finance side of things. Um, I actually worked for a time in the state of Minnesota, I was always still a Packer fan, and uh, moved back to my hometown, a Little Shoot, Wisconsin, um, and was the finance director there for uh, two years, three years, and then became the administrator. Uh, from Little Shoot, I moved down to the village of Brown Deer. I was the village manager there for a number of years, almost 15 years, 
And then finally, I concluded my public service as a city manager in the city of Eau Claire and retired there and started working with the private sector. So I don't know, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, or council members, if you have questions, but certainly be available to answer any questions you might have. Anybody have any questions? Russ, uh, do, do we have the days that you're going to be here? Do we? I was thinking of Tuesdays and Thursdays, the days that you're in the office. Okay. That would be great. And then I think Andrew, Andrew number two is here. Mondays and Tuesdays. So he'd be here that same one of those days too. To, yeah. So that would be great. It, it, and part of my background is also economic development. I've, uh, I've done uh, tax increment financing deals for the city of Eau Claire, the village of Brown Deer, the village of Little Shoot, um, help try to bring businesses to those communities as well. Um, so pretty uh, versed in, in economic development as well. All right. Other questions? <clears throat> well, thank you, Russ. I appreciate no that uh, you are willing to do this. Obviously, you're going to get paid for it, but I mean, uh, we appreciate that your willingness to step in. I know uh, substituting is, is not always the best way to to work with people, but I, we're, I'm pretty confident in talking to the other staff members that uh, they feel pretty comfortable work, to work with you. So, thanks. Okay. Uh, and we're starting right away next week. I'm planning on having them in Thursday morning. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we would need an approval approval of this contract uh, that Sandy or Sandy Kathy is proposing. I, I'd just like to interject and, and ask a question. Uh -huh. I may. Go ahead. Um, not of Russ necessarily, but um, yes of Kathy. Um, so this agenda item is to uh, approve uh, hiring of Russ uh, for for this period of time, but the um, proposal that's in our minutes also talks about um, professional recruitment. Are, are we voting on that tonight, or are we just voting on? No, right now I'm only asking him to come in and just do the interim work. Okay, good. Yes. Not the recruit. Because I, I, I'd just like to throw it out there that I think hiring um, our administrator is a pretty big uh, decision, and I, I would like to see that put out for, um, you know, get a couple proposals from a couple different companies before we rush into selecting one company to help us find that administrator. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may just yeah. respond to that or just add a couple additional points. Um, and I certainly appreciate uh, your, your thoughts and comments on that. Um, basically, our proposal uh, and our compensation would be the same. Uh, so the, my number of hours that working on a recruitment uh, proposal would be the same hourly rate um, that, that we do for interim services. Um, but um, I, I certainly understand that. But we would be, definitely be interested in doing it. And we've actually... Uh, when we did the village of Hortonville, found that there were some economies, um, if I'm in the office and have some downtime, I can be working on the recruitment process as well uh, and working with council, working with staff members. But um, be that as it may, um, I think what we're looking at now is just to get some help in uh, taking care of the day-to-day -day business. So. And just to be clear, when it comes time to decide on who to hire to do this kind of work, is that something that's going to appear before the council and we'll make a decision on that? Or is this... We can, we can bring that back to council. Yeah, I mean, I, I would like us to also take a look at Public Administration Associates out of Oshkosh. Um, they've worked with over 160 uh, communities, municipalities in the state of Wisconsin. That's their main line of focus. They, they're not doing a million things, and this just happens to be a So a is HR, HR Gov is another one. So there's, there's yeah. several of them out there. We should there. get some other, yes. make sure we're getting the best. Mm -hmm. Well, I, again, I just want to remind everybody that uh, uh, city administrator's position, as well as department heads, is the uh, uh, appointment of the mayor. And the, so the mayor drives this discussion on uh, who we hire for a city administrator and how we do that. So. It really comes down to me with your, with your approval of whatever I decide to do in the future. Okay. 
All right, any other questions or comments? <clears throat> All right, uh, you ready to vote? We need a motion. Oh, then we need a motion. <laughs> Anybody would like to make a motion? Motion for approval. Second. Motion by Hagen, second by, I'm sorry, Keelan, that we approve uh, entering into a contract with IPR, uh, which is Integrated Public Resources for the assistance of, with city administration. And uh, the fee was $110 per hour uh, with uh, approximately five to six hours uh, a day a day, f f two days a week. All right, any other discussion? Sandy will call the roll. Dimitri Martin. Aye. Uh, Dave Peterson. Aye. Mary Fair. Aye. Paul Hagen. Aye. Steve Hackett. Aye. Ellen Keeland. Aye. Scott Prochatsky. Aye. And Lori Chestnut. Aye. Eight ayes, motion carried. All right, uh, Russ, thank you. Appreciate you coming tonight. Look forward to working with you. Uh, next up, we have a special use permit for PI Tower Development, LLC. This is for a ground lease agreement secured for NAIM LLC, the owner, and Peter Shaw from Tom 80 Realty Services Incorporated is acting as the agent, and this is a uh, 902 Churchill Street. Uh, Kathy, your name's on this one. Yeah, I'm going to Even though to it went through city planning. <laughs> I'm going to defer this to Justin. Awesome. <laughs> uh, this actually went through city planning commission, and uh, Peter is here tonight, too, so if we have uh, questions of him, he's sitting in the back of the room, we can certainly That's ask that. Uh, recognition. And just kind of explain, Justin, too, where the... <clears throat> where the tower is. It's 902 Churchill Street, but... That's known as the Rose Garden Cafe, restaurant uh, corner or near Churchill Street there. Uh, the property, let's see, oh, the I should back up, excuse me. The memo is shown on page 112 and, and the application is thereafter for multiple pages. I'm scrolling through to see if there's an aerial for uh, you to reference. There it is, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Uh, yes, uh, 141, um, I thought there was a better one than that. Uh, well, regardless, the, uh, the, the Rose Garden Cafe, the property there is L-shaped. It tucks behind the uh, current bus garage there. Uh, the land lease is approximately 70 foot by 70 foot, so it'd be tucked away in that corner there. Uh, and there uh, got approval from Plan Commission uh, for the special use to put up a 125 foot uh, monopole, which is basically just a big round pole up in the air uh, to house uh, cellular equipment, uh, and specific Verizon would utilize it at first. Uh, in the future, there's room to expand to additional cell providers. Um, so basically, that's, it's just the land lease agreement to put this up here. Uh, reviewing the state statutes, this falls within all the uh, legal requirements of uh, state statutes and uh, within our um, code, our municipal code. Uh, so everything has, I guess, checked the boxes. Uh, there's a number of, of questions and answers that went on during the plan commission uh, as far as uh, uh, what happens if it would potentially fall, uh, the fencing, um, <clears throat> falling was a concern. It is designed or engineered that if it were to break, it would break at like a, a midpoint or a half section uh, and just kind of fold onto itself uh, and thus would not fall outside of that 70 foot um, footprint. Uh, fencing will be there installed, that meets the code. Uh, uh, within, I guess, our fencing code of, of with the, within the city. Uh, there is no potential or believed potential of interference with other radio signals. Uh, there is a, a letter in here um, from, oh, it's escapes me right now, excuse me. Um, uh, where did that go? Well, there's also a, 
letter here, a review from the Federal Aviation Administration uh, as far as a flight zone or a path or a conflict with that, uh, showing that it, it checks all the bar boxes uh, for the FAA. Uh, so basically, yeah, after a pretty extensive review, uh, it was determined that this fits within state statutes and city codes um, and was basically voted to allow to come to council. So it has to come here now for final approval. Yeah, just a little bit of history, too. There was a few years ago at the state level, the state has uh, uh, given communities less ability to govern these uh, towers. So we very, there's very little that we can do, even if we didn't like it necessarily. I hate to say it that way, but that, that's really what's happening here is we're following the state rules. We changed our, we changed our ordinances to match the state. We couldn't be more strict than what the state is. And so they're well within what the state guidelines are here. Although uh, at City Planning Commission, I think, Alan, you'll agree, uh, Peter was more than um, willing to discuss uh, uh, everything that's going on with this tower and, 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 uh, and so forth. So if you're interested in asking him some questions, I, I think he'd be willing to answer those. Or Peter, if you have any comments you'd like to make, just give your name, please, too. Well, thank you very much for summarizing the app. And uh, yes, again, I'm Peter Shaw, I'm agent for both the applicants. Uh, the tower owner is PI Tower Development LLC, and then Verizon Wireless would be their, their first tenant and um, the provider, service provider from the facility. So um, I can answer any questions. I don't know if you've a chance to read the app. We did have a, a decent discussion with it. The Planning Commission um, received unanimous recommendation for approval and are respectfully asking for the same. I guess I would like to ask <clears throat> why why that location right off of a main corridor coming into town? Sure. It so I mean, appears to me like it would be a bit of an eyesight, uh, chain link fencing in a tall uh, tower in, in an area of town that we need to beautify. Okay. Well, that's a fair question. So essentially, locations of cell towers are based off of a, of a network engineering need. So currently, right now, WAPAC has got uh, the two closest towers are kind of to the Northwest, and I think we're 10 and 54 hit. So essentially, as user demand grows, uh, we all use iPhones and iPads. Um, uh, the network gets stressed, and you need to add sites relative to where other sites are and where the user patterns are. So, um, so it really starts with a uh, search ring developed by their RF engineering group, identifying at what location, at what height they need a site to, to satisfy their need. So when we did get this, uh, you know, you are talking about a commercial corridor, and uh, these uses historically are considered very compatible. Uh, and as he mentioned, when we found this property, we thought it lent itself to it very well. Uh, you could find, there was a uh, spot L-shaped in the back of the property to help obscure it, um, push it back there. There's uh, some mature tree line behind it to the west, and then you do have the bus barn kind of to the north of it. So um, all things considered, I think it's a good site. For, um, for any sort of mitigating any sort of impacts, like you mentioned. Okay. Uh, did somebody else have a question over here? I thought Paul. I did, but Dimitri kind of asked what I was. Okay. Just was kind of wondering what, what the purpose of it was, if it was to improve service or. It is. And, they're, and it's really the challenge of Verizon Wireless and companies like them, they're chasing the demand. I mean, every year the technology evolves, the user demand. Um, you know, wireless communications are just, you know, they're, they can't keep up. So that's really what you're seeing nowadays on these sites. So um, if you look at the <coughs> site from Churchill Street and you can envision where the Rose Garden is, they have a parking lot to the left of that. This is going to be in the far back right corner, right behind the school district's um, building, one of their big garages that they have there. So it's going to be tucked back in there. To the left, there is a residential area, but there is a, is it six foot? There's a, there's a, I think it's a, either a five or six foot uh, fence between the parking lot and the residential. So uh, I, I don't know who put it up, if the residential person put it up or if the 
or the owners of Rose Garden put it up, but there is a, some separation there, and then also on the back side. And of course, the chain link fence, we asked, uh, the city asked that the, the barb part of the wire be put even higher so that we don't have to worry about anybody getting injured from uh, just walking by there, even if they're going to. So I think we did it about as much as we can to, to, to make this uh, work at this site, as much as we're allowed to do, quite honestly. Okay, any other questions? All right, uh, we'd be looking for a motion then. I move to approve the special use permit for PI Tower Development, LLC. Second. Motion by Keelan, second by Prochatsky that we approve of this special use permit at 902 Churchill Street. Any discussion? Sandy will call the roll. Paul Hagan. Aye. Alan Keeland. Aye. Mary Fair. Aye. Scott Prochatsky. Aye. Dave Peterson. Aye. Dimitri Martin. No. Lori Chestnut. Aye. And Steve Hackett. I don't use any of these things, but I wrote on this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please vote. <laughs> okay. Seven ayes, one no, motion carried. All right, thank you. Thanks, Peter, for showing up and explaining. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, a substantial alteration, alternate, alteration to uh, special use permit uh, uh, determination and special use permit annual review for the Foundations for Living. Uh, this is that uh, property on Churchill Street that, that uh, uh, you know, will allow homeless people to stay overnight there. Uh, it, when they say substantial, it, you really need to dig down in there. And I, if you don't mind, Kathy, I'll just keep moving sure. with this because this was at city planning. Um, this was just a request from Foundations for Living so that they can add uh, bathroom facilities and also an area for washer and dryers too so that they can... Um, they do not have bathroom facilities at the, at this time, so um, and they do allow people to stay overnight. So, it, um, city planning commission did did uh, recommend to council that we approve this special use permit with those changes. Uh, the other thing is is that they're required to come back on an annual basis to have their special use permit. Uh, they asked for three years uh, review on it, and and uh, we compromised on two years uh, at the city planning level. So both of those items are the request of the foundations for living. Uh, I don't know if you have any other questions that you can ask either Alan, Justin, Kathy, or myself. We were all at that meeting. Otherwise, we'd be looking for a motion to approve. I have. Yes. Is, it, is the building owned by foundations or is it owned by somebody else? I, well, I think it... I, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's on a land contract. So I okay. think it is owned by Foundations for Living, and they're paying uh, the former owners. It was uh, Amusement, what was mm -hmm. it, Gooder Johns or, yeah, yeah. The City Plan Commission also decided that this was not a substantial alteration, uh, which is, you know, there's a, a special requirement there, and so we, it's just a continued special use permit, um, not substantial alteration. So I guess we're just, if you approve tonight, you're just approving that they're allowed to alter their facility to, to put showers in there and, and uh, uh, facilities for a washer and dryer in there, and then also a change from an annual review to a biannual review. Thank you, Alan, for that. Mayor? Would yes. they... <laughs> With, with doing this, okay, do they still have to go through all the other permit stuff through, like, building permits and the yeah, plumbing absolutely. permits? And, okay. and a review. And yeah. a review, okay. Yeah, absolutely. All of this would be contingent upon them getting <coughs> approval from, okay. from our building inspector. Make a motion we approve. Second. Motion by Hackett, second by Keelan, that we approve of the alteration to the Foundations for Living uh, facility and uh, also change their review process uh, for the special use from uh, annual to biannual. 
review. And that does occur in October of that year. Any further discussion? Sandy will call the roll. Paul Hagan. Aye. Scott Prochatsky. Aye. Dave Peterson. Aye. Mary Fair. Aye. Dimitri Martin. Aye. Lori Chestnut. Aye. Alan Keeland. Aye. And Steve Hackett. Aye. Eight ayes, motion carried. All right, uh, next up, and this is just discussion only. Uh, this is discussing uh, the al allowing of ATVs and UTVs on city streets. And uh, we had some lengthy discussion today with the staff. And um, I, I, I think we all came to the conclusion that we're probably not really ready to, to make a recommendation tonight. And, and I talked to uh, Lori tonight too, and she has the name of the individual that's uh, that's uh, county. He's a county deputy, but he's president of the ATV. Yeah. So if we have some interest from a council level, um, uh, we would ask him to to come to a, either our next meeting or, or one of the next meetings that he could attend and discuss this for the future. Uh, the impetus for this is actually this was requ requested uh, probably about 18 months ago, and it. It never really made it even out of the mayor's office uh, uh, with discussion at that time. But it's come back to light uh, because um, the townships, uh, the surrounding townships, now I, uh, three of the four surrounding townships have already approved uh, allowing ATVs on their roads. Um, uh, one of the townships I understand is is discussing it, and I don't know whether they'll approve it or not. But uh, I, I think it's pretty favorable. So all four of the townships are are around us. We'll have ATV trails. Um, the discussion was uh, whether the city is interested in allowing ATVs and UTVs to um, um, pass through our our city. Uh, and there are a couple of options that we could talk about. They would be uh, just a, uh, and, and I'm just starting the discussion, and, and we can go as far as we want with us tonight, and then I would say that we would table it until we can get this individual here to discuss it a little bit more. But um, we could talk about just a designated uh, road that they would travel through the city uh, to get from one side to the other. We could talk about... Uh, many roads that they're allowed to. There are roads that they're not allowed to uh, travel on, and, and Chief Ozell could speak to that. Uh, we could also look at uh, what we have. We do have an ordinance for snowmobiles. Uh, ordinance, the ordinance for snowmobiles is really pretty basic. It says that if the property owner allows you to drive on their property, uh, then you're allowed to drive in the city. Well, uh, we only have a few examples of those within the city, and that would be, uh, without naming names, but we're with uh, the truck stop. Obviously, you've seen snowmobiles out there. Uh, JRs across the street. Um, Courtside is within the city. Uh, Club 22 is within the city. Um, Fleet Farm obviously is within the city to get fuel. Um, yeah, in the industrial park also, we allow them to go through there, uh, and that was done by city approval. So basically, our ordinance for snowmobiles says as long as, as, as the property owner approves it, and we're a property owner, obviously, the city is, uh, then, then, it's, then the city is okay with that. We obviously don't want snowmobilers to drive across. We don't want to mandate that, that a snowmobiler can drive across your property. You know, we want it to be your decision to do that as a property owner, obviously. Paul. Uh, I had some fairly lengthy discussions about this with uh, uh, my neighbor yeah, who's in support of this. And um, it seemed, you know, one of the things that is on the positive side is that is if the townships are embracing this and we ha at least have some corridor areas where, where we would allow this, uh, it would... Um, down the road, possibly increase tourism to this area quite a bit. Um, so I think it's something that we shouldn't necessarily dismiss out of hand. Um, I think we should discuss it and perhaps uh, invite the gentleman 
uh, to talk to us about it and, and uh, uh, down the road maybe allow some some corridors where where um, UTVs <coughs> ATVs could get through the city okay thanks Paul I'd, I'd like to know what uh, the chief's opinion of it is well I own a I actually own an ATV and I've driven UTVs um, I see some pros and I see some some cons we we have to remember about the safety as to what roads you would designate those to be at. Um, ATVs are going to be a little more, more dangerous because they don't have seat belts. UTVs do have seat belts. Um, anybody that's at the age of 16, age of 18, would have to wear a helmet. So um, we do ride, when I go up north, we do ride our four wheelers and UTVs up on the roads up there and we do it in a safe manner. We would just have to designate areas in the city if that's something that the city council would pursue as to where it would be safe for them to operate. So. You know, I think one of the big things they were looking at was where could they get gas coming, all this coming together is where can they get gas in the city? And you know, so that's I, I start, that's what I was hearing a lot of was a place to maybe come and maybe even to have a restaurant close where they could go. So, and I, I have one question for Brian. Brian, okay, if there's 16 or under or 18, do they have to take an ATV class to, you know, I know it's nice to wear a helmet, but do, do they have to take the class to learn how to um, be a good citizen to that ATV? <laughs> I honestly don't know that answer. I would assume they would. Okay. Just like they would with a boater safety, or right. they would have to take a motorcycle. Okay. Um, my kids aren't that age yet, so I don't have to worry about that yet. Well, I do know <laughs> that if they ride on public properties, they do have to have the, the, the training. Training. Yeah. And they yeah. do have to have a valid driver's license. Okay. So you just can't operate it without a valid driver's license. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Scott? I think with the, if you look at the ads on TVs, there's quite a proliferation of these UTVs and maybe not so much ATVs, but, uh, and looking at some of the information we had here of other cities, I, you know, they, they've started to allow it in quite big cities. So I think it's something we really should consider uh, seriously, uh, albeit maybe designated roads, because I think it's just a uh, up and coming new form of recreation. Okay, so if you're okay, we'll bring something back. Uh, I'll get you the number. Yeah, as soon as we can get this person to come and, and speak to us on that, and then we can discuss from there where we wanna go. We'll probably have it as some kind of action item at a meeting in the near future. I don't know if it will be our first meeting in August, but it will be within the next month and a half, I would say. Okay. All right. Uh, next, we have uh, license report 1454. This is a taxi driver's license. Um, this is for, uh, you can see that it's on page 232, so we'd just be looking for motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Keelan, second by Chestnut, that we approve license report 1454. Discussion, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against, motion carried. Uh, license report 1455, which is the operator's license uh, for this month, page 233. Again, we're looking for a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Motion by Peterson, second by Hackett, that we approve of. I have one correction. Yeah, you can. <laughs> the fourth name down says Brenda Burrow. It should be Rebecca Burrow. Okay. It's a typo on the report. All right. Who made the motion again? Peterson and Hackett. You're okay with that Absolutely. change? Absolutely. I don't like it, but I'm going to. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Comedian. <laughs> All right. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Against, motion carried. 
Uh, next up, we're going into closed session here. This is a motion to convene into closed session in accordance with uh, Wisconsin State Statute 19.85, parent 1, parent E, deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, uh, the investing of public funds or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. So moved. Second. Motion by Keelan, second by Hagan, uh, that we go into closed session. Any discussion? Uh, Sandy, we'll call a roll. Alan Keeland? Aye. Scott Prochatsky? Aye. Dave Peterson? Aye. Steve Hackett? Aye. Paul Hagan? Aye. Mary Fair? Aye. Dimitri Martin? Aye. Lori Chestnut? Aye. Uh, eight ayes. Motion carried.